YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. For today's review, we are going to be talking about the Power Rangers Universe series. In this first couple minutes, I'm going to just review this compendium. As far as a recommendation to those of you that haven't read it yet, just kind of reviewing the book itself. And then I'm going to kind of give some broad strokes, thoughts, a more spoiler review on the overall arc. I'm not going to go too in-depth because I have individual reviews for all six issues where I go in-depth on each individual event. But I had planned on doing a sort of series review, and I kind of wanted to give my overall thoughts now that I've let this story sit for a while, and this is the perfect opportunity. But as far as just talking about this book, this is a really nice collection. You know, we do have a series of different collections for the comics. You know, for the main ones, you do have the individual volumes, and then later you'll get the big hardcover compendiums, which I always prefer because they're just kind of cooler on the shelf. They're just a cooler product in general. And then for the most part, when we have like little mini series of certain issues, you'll get a paperback, which is honestly totally fine. They're really nicely done. You know, it includes the cover art and all that stuff. And this is effectively that, but it's a hardcover. It's like a nicer version of these little smaller compendiums. It's the six issue mini series. There's a hardcover here. It highlights the Morphinaut, uh, the beginnings of the Phantom Ranger here. Really cool art there on there. In fact, this thing really makes it seem like it's only about the Phantom Ranger, which is a significant part of the story, but I would argue that the Squadron Rangers slash the Emissaries are a much bigger focus than this, but it's kind of how they're marketing this. But it's a really nice book. Like I said, it compiles all six issues, and in the back you get like all of the, the covers they had throughout it, and then you also, I mean, I'll probably have footage of this as well, but you have like the, you know, character art of the, not concept art, but the character art for like the Squadron Rangers and all that stuff, which is really neat. It's kind of like a mini version of the larger hardcover deluxe editions. So if you are a fan of this series, or you at least want to own it, this is definitely a great way to pick it up. You get it all at once in this nice book with all these bonuses, and kind of includes everything about it. Now, if you haven't read it yet and are thinking about checking it out, it's a very mixed series. It's a very uneven series. I have mixed thoughts on it myself, but it adds some really significant and interesting lore, and I personally believe it's at least worth checking out to make up your mind for yourself. If you can, like, appreciate stories that are more mixed like this and Beyond the Grid that actually have some really interesting aspects to it, I think it's at least worth a shot. And it, like I said, it has some significant lore. So if you're into the comics, I recommend checking it out just for that because even if the story is mixed, I personally really like the lore additions to this and I'm eager to see how they might expand upon it in the future. It does have some contradictions to existing things set up, but in my opinion, it's nothing overly major and I am legitimately interested to see how they might reconcile or smooth that over in the future. And they already have included an aspect introduced in this in the main comic in Mighty Morphin's penultimate finale. So that they're showing that they're already going to be making use of it. So I think if you're going to be continuing to read the main series, it's worth checking out for the big lore editions because there's at least a decent chance stuff in this will come up later in some form. Now, talking about spoilers, talking about the overall series, like I said, this was a very mixed series that I had a mixed experience with. I was very excited for it because I really love the lore and the care that they take with the lore in the Power Rangers series for the comics. And I was excited for this because we're going to explore the Phantom Ranger, we're going to get an adaption of the Die Rangers. I did not see the origins of the Emissaries coming. And there was a lot to like, but it was also very mixed. I think the most mixed thing was kind of the pacing and the writing in terms of the characters. I wish this was about 10 issues instead of 6. I think it needed room to breathe. I think I would have liked to have seen the Squadron Rangers active for a little bit longer. It felt like they were only the Squadron Rangers for a hot minute before they became the Emissaries. And I think it would have been really nice to see them actually active as the team. I like this idea of the team kind of having to be stationed on this planet and keep Dark Spectre at bay. And it would have been cool to see them active for a little bit longer. Not to mention, I think one of the weaknesses of this is that I wasn't terribly invested in the characters as individuals. I sort of felt their bond as a group. They did a decent-ish job with that at times. But for the most part, I felt their individual characterization and a more in-depth bond for the characters was missing. And I think a little bit lengthier of a series would have allowed the pacing of the series to breathe and also allowed me to get more attached to the characters as individuals and as a group, which I think would have strengthened the overall story and the final sacrifice. Not to mention, I think the early couple issues are kind of hard to get into. They're like really dense and strangely structured where it kind of reminded me when I first read uh, the, the Sins of the Future graphic novel, where that one also had kind of an interesting structure that was kind of hard to sink your teeth into. But that's one, when I reread it, that it paid off where I'm like, okay, now I understand what they're doing and the structure and what it's meant to be. And once I reread it, I was able to appreciate it. With this one, even upon rereads, the structure and everything is still a little bit dense. You're being thrown at a lot, a lot of different names. It's kind of hard to sink your teeth into it and to get invested in the characters and world until the lore reveals start happening. And that's, I think, one of the weaknesses. Is it feels very strange in that regard. It very much reminds me of Beyond the Grid, although I think I like it Beyond the Grid, and I think the dialogue and writing is a little bit stronger than aspects of Beyond the Grid, as Beyond the Grid's 
It was really weird. Like, I'm not usually one to call out dialogue because I feel like fans are always like, oh, that's bad writing, as if there's some sort of really good writer. But there was some really strange dialogue, like, writer, like writing in there that felt off. And there was also a longer run with that. And they didn't take advantage of that for developing the team as much, in my opinion. And I think this is better than Beyond the Grid in the writing regard. Um, I, I mean, I, I just made fun of fans for critiquing writing that I'm critiquing writing. But you know what I mean? I'm just saying my opinion is this feels like a stronger product. But it feels similar in the sense that it's very mixed and strange, but it's filled with really cool lore and plot details, much like Beyond the Grid. And that brings me to what I like about it, is I really love the lore in this. We get more insight into the Morphin Masters and the Morphinaut, uh, Phantom Ranger. I, I actually haven't looked up too reaction on how controversial or not controversial the origin of this guy is. But I personally really liked what they did with him. It's not like it's my favorite, and there definitely could have maybe been cooler stuff they did with the Phantom Rangers origin, especially with, like, decades of buildup. But for the most part, I like what they did. I like how deeply tied he is into the history of the Morphin Masters and the Morphin Grid, and they did it in such a way that gives him backstory and character, but yet we still don't fully reveal him. Like, we never see his face, we don't know his real name, I don't expect us to learn that he's somebody important, like, oh my god, my name is Phantom, Phantom Skywalker, or something like that. But... It leaves the opportunity for you to possibly explore him on a more personal level later. But also, for now, I think they did a good job with this origin of exploring him in a deeper manner while still maintaining an air of mystery. I also really like what they did with Dark Spectre in this. I feel like there's been kind of a slow build to Dark Spectre's importance and lore across all the main series, and I really like how this was foreshadowing for Dark Spectre's bigger role as a bigger threat for the Power Rangers and the Grid overall, and establishing that the Morphin Grid is his, is, is his antithesis. And I really like the origins of the Squadron Rangers as effectively what seems to be the first or one of the first teams of Power Rangers. It was cool just to see an adaption of the Die Ranger costumes and get our own original Black Ranger. And also I like the idea that one of the first Ranger teams that ever transformed, transformed into forms that didn't exist yet from linear time's perspective. But from the grid's perspective, like all of time and space is happening at once. And the fact that the first Rangers tr that transformed, transformed into forms that technically didn't exist from a linear perspective was the type of timey-wimey stuff that I personally really like. I thought that was really cool. And I like the way that all leaned into it where like, it was unstable, and this is how kind of how they discovered Morphers, was learning to stabilize it and to customize it. And that was kind of the origin of Morphers. And then it led into the foreshadowing for the Emissaries. And that was probably one of my favorite cool things, was that this was unexpectedly the origin of the Emissaries. It does contradict things previously set up, like immediately, literally, because there was a little bit of a mini-origin given in the recent Power Rangers ongoing. But it was very vague, and it's easy to reconcile that later. But if we're setting aside the retcon of it all for a second, just... Looking at this in a bubble, I by far prefer this origin for the Emissaries. I think it's far more interesting for the mythology and the characters. I think the fact that the Emissaries were one of the first Rangers makes 100% sense. It sets up a lot more interesting things in the future. Like I said, they've already taken advantage of it in the main Mighty Morphin ongoing, when the pink Emissary finally shows up in Kim's like little Vision uh, holodeck situation. And I actually really like the origins of everything in here. Like Setting aside my mixed thoughts on the writing and pacing and the contradictions, I love the origins for the Emissaries for this, and I think it's far more interesting. It makes them more interesting characters. It certainly sets up questions for the future, though, and some contradictions. Just to address that real quick, I mean, first of all, this isn't really that unheard of for comics, to be honest. If you've ever read or followed or are familiar with any other comic series, lore contradictions and changes are constant. And this is fairly small scale compared to some of the things I've seen in other comics. I'm not saying, like, Sort of a more negative practice like this should always be perpetuated throughout different comics, but it's hardly unheard of at all. Like I said, it's very common. If you go read the wiki for almost any Marvel or DC character, you'll see that their origins and backstory have changed a dozen times. Sometimes on accident, when they accidentally have different writers change the origins, and then later they have to reconcile it or retcon it. Sometimes on purpose, they'll do whole sweeping changes like the New 52 or Rebirth. So it's really not that strange, and I'm honestly interested to see how they reconcile it. Contradict, like I said, in Power Rangers when they said that the Morphin Masters forged them from stars that were created from the Morphin Masters, that could be easily retconned as kind of a tale that gets lost through time. And from a technical point of view, the Morphin Masters are the the parents of the Emissaries, so they did create them from a certain point of view. It does also contradict just the general idea and vibe of the Emissaries serving the Morphin Masters from early in the comic, but I think that's easily reconciled later through lots of interesting and different things, in my opinion. Overall, this is a very mixed comic, but it has a lot of cool lore in it. I definitely wish it was a little bit longer, I wish it was a little bit more fleshed out, and I wish that there was a little bit of a tighter storytelling with it, but I kind of have a soft spot for it because I personally really dig 
the lore change, uh, aspects they had in it. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 for an overall score of this series. Again, it's not perfect. It could have been better, but I really dig the lore they added to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes in the future. But that's about it for this one, guys. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.